Good evening, everyone. Today, we are going to be walking you through installation and configuration of the new uh, DMX to go uh, DMX adapter for the RGB to go series of controllers. So, uh, an interesting note is that this is actually uh, compatible with both WLED and ES Pixel Stick. Uh, tonight we're going to go through the configuration with uh, WLED. Now WLED is perfect if you have simple DMX devices. And what I mean by a simple DMX device is uh, one that simply you're going to be pushing uh, color data or brightness data to. So in my case I've got a PAR lamp here. Uh, this, is a, this, this is going to be a great example for that. So let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is flash the DMX enabled version of WLED onto our ESP32. Today we're going to be attaching this to a solo to go controller which is a single port controller. It's really perfect for WLED with the DMX because the DMX firmware disables all inputs except output 1. So using a larger controller is just it just seems like a waste because you're losing those extra outputs. So let's uh, plug a USB cable into our ESP32. We're going to load the firmware. Uh, refresh devices. You can see the COM port listed there. The browse button. I have a few firmwares available. Um, currently, you're going to want to probably use the 14.4 version. I noticed some issues with the 15 beta 6. Um, I won't go into those too much now, but load the 14.4 version. You can always upgrade later if you'd like. Press the flash ESP button. Now as that's flashing, uh, I will make all of the images available on both my website rgb2go.com and in the description of this video. So this flash will take about 30 seconds or so. Once you see that count up to 100%, we'll wait for the ROM to load. Okay, it's loaded. There we go. Now we're going to disconnect. Now we're going to plug it back into the solo to go controller. Make sure the USB port is facing in. And make sure there are no pins overhanging. Again, during this process, there is no power onto the solo to go. It's plugged in, but my power supply is turned off. Okay, it's plugged in. And now I'm going to turn the power on. And you'll notice we have power lights on the solo to go and the DMX to go adapter. The next thing you're going to want to do is grab your mobile device and connect to the WLED AP access point. It's going to prompt you for a password. The password is all lowercase WLED1234. Once you sign into the network, you're going to want to go to Wi-Fi settings. From here, you're going to want to enter in your Wi-Fi network name and password, which I'll do off camera. Once your password's entered, scroll down until you get to AP Opens. Instead of no connection after boot, we're going to set that to always. What that will do is it will always leave this built-in access point running, even if it connects to a Wi-Fi network, just in case we need to uh, log back in. And then save and connect. Once it reboots, it should reload. And I find the best thing to do is to go to Config, Wi-Fi Setup. And if you scroll down, you'll find your client IP address. And once you have that, you're going to want to go to your web browser and just type that in. In my case, it's 10.1.132. And we're connected. Now, as far as configuration is concerned, right, we don't have any pixels hooked up to this controller, so we're not getting any lights by default. I do have the DMX to go connected via just a three wire jumper cable ground to ground, data to data, volts to, voltage to voltage. So now inside of WLED, we're going to go to the config button 
and scroll down to DMX output. So WLED is not doing anything overly fancy here. It is simply converting pixel data to essentially something that a, a DMX device can understand. Now it's important to note that every DMX device is different. PAR lamps and flood lamps, they're, they're probably the simplest fixtures that you could want to install using DMX. And, and that the reason that they probably have very few channels. You'll know that each channel in DMX is a function. The channels will be defined usually by the manual that comes with the device. According to my manual, channel 1 on this PAR lamp is brightness. Channel 2 is red. Channel 3 is green. And channel 4 is blue. So I'm going to set those right now. I'm going to change the number of channels per fixture to 4. Set channel 1 to brightness. I'm going to set channel 2 to red. Channel 3 to green. Channel 4 to blue. I'm going to change my start channel to 20 only because when my PAR lamp boots up it defaults to channel 20. There's a display on the back that I can't you can't see in my camera angle right now but when you when you have a DMX device in front of you you'll see the the display that shows your channel number. I'm also going to set a spacing of 10 between my channels just to make it round and easy. So and I'm going to press save. And we have lights. Now, if you're familiar with WLED, you'll know that when you turn your controller on, it boots up to an amber color, which is sort of like a yellowish, goldish hue. Uh, you'll, you'll see the red and the green lights are what are on by default here, and that's actually, if you were to shine this in a dark room against the wall, those lights would blend and it would be an amber color. Now, going back to the DMX output, let's look at the DMX map, and we'll see what that is. Now I had started at channel 20, and this gives a listing of all the channels. So 20 is shutter, 21 is red, 22 is green, 23 is blue. And because I said to uh, space the start channels out to every 10, this is in case I wanted to add, say, several PAR lamps. Say I had three of these devices. I would put my first device on channel 20. And that's a setting you would actually configure on the DMX device itself. I would then set my second device, daisy chain from the first with a cable, to 30, and the third device to 40. Now, the way DMX works, there's actually 512 channels per universe. So you could have as many PAR lamps here as you could fit in the 512 channels. So if you have a device that takes up say 16 channels, like a moving head is pretty complicated, uh, you could put still several daisy chained, but the 16 channels would mean you would you could only put, you could put you would have to put fewer devices before you hit this 512 channel limit. If that makes sense, all these are configured, we're going to go back to our color screen. Now remember WLED is converting pixel data to DMX data. So, what does that mean? When we play with the brightness, it's going to convert this value to a number between 0 and 255 that it's going to send to the DMX device. So if we set the brightness to 0, it's going to send on channel 1, which is the brightness channel, a value of 0 to the device, which sets its brightness to 0. And you can see the lights have gone off. We'll turn that back up. Now if you choose a solid red color, it is going to send a value of 255 on channel 1, maxing out that and setting a value of 0 to the green and blue channels, allowing only the red lights to light. Same thing's true with blue. It'll send 255 on the blue channel and 0 on red and green, and green accordingly. White is a combination of red, green, and blue. That's 255 on each channel. Now regular effects work just as well. Let's try rainbow is a pretty good effect. And just like you would get a rainbow effect on your pixels, it's going to try and emulate what a single pixel would do if it were connected. 
So that's really it. Um, it can get more complicated if you like, if you wanted to add more uh, DMX devices. You would just want to do so, again, under DMX output. Just note what the next channel number would be and connect your next DMX device in line with the current one. As you can tell on the back of these devices, let's see if I can do this without shorting anything out. You can see this is defaulted to, to D20. You would want to use the controls on your DMX device and raise that to 30. So your, your next light would be 30 in line. Next up, we're going to configure our power lamp via X lights. Now we're starting from scratch here. The controller's not set up yet. So we're going to create a new controller by clicking the Add Ethernet button. And the reason we do this is because Discover does not yet detect WLED devices. So we're going to set this up manually. We're going to name the controller Solo to Go DMX. We'll enter in the IP address, which was 10.1.1. 32. Set the protocol to DDP. And turn off keep channel numbers. And save the controller. Now under the layout tab, after we save settings, we go to the Layout tab. We're going to create a line of pixels. Now our line is really only going to consist of one pixel. So we'll change that from 50 nodes to 1. And it's pretty small there, so let's, uh, let's make it a little bigger. Let's scroll down to Appearance. Change the pixel size to something ridiculous, like 100. And uh, let's make it a blended circle so it looks more like a floodlight. And save. Okay. Let's go back to the controller tab. I realized we had forgotten to set uh, the vendor here. We're going to set this for RGB to go. And the model, normally you would choose solo to go. Um, but uh, the last updates I've sent, x lights have not made it through yet. So for now, you, you're safe to choose the Duo to Kido for now. Since there is no second port, it'll just ignore that information that's sent there. Okay, so save. Now we can visualize. We're going to drag the uh, single line we just created into pixel port 1. Close that window and save. Now we go to Sequencer, and we will start a new test sequence. I'm just going to do an animation for now at 20 frames per second. 30 seconds long. And uh, we're going to set some timing marks roughly every 5 seconds. Zooming in so we can see the model a little better. Let's just create a solid color of red for the first effect, solid color of green for the second effect. I'll do a solid color of blue for the third effect. I'll do a Color wash from blue to red. Or rather, let's do blue to yellow. And here we'll do, let's do something a little bit more fancy. Let's do a bar effect on one pixel. So essentially it'll look like a flashing lights. We'll do red and green flashing. We'll increase the particle, the palette rep, increase the cycles. Okay, now to start out putting the lights, we'll press the I'll put the light button and play our sequence. Starts off with red. 
changes to green, changes to blue, and switches to a blue to yellow wash. And then flashing between red and green. You obviously can throw more complicated effects on this. You can add multiple PAR lamps in a row on the same controller and treat it like a string of pixels. The important thing to realize is we're not really configuring any DMX data in x -Lights. We are just literally sending pixel data and WLED is handling the conversion along with this adapter card to make the DMX device function as a single pixel. So really straightforward. With more complicated devices, we're going to require a more complicated firmware, and we will talk about that in the next video. But for now, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Email me, jason at rgb2go.com, or leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, and have a great night.